double out and it starts screwing up. You start coming back around, right? which, which is a must. Okay. If you look at torsal tilt number two there, from B4 to the top, you're going to have about a five degree tilt because we set up an address here that's just perfectly straight. Uh, torsal tilt number two. And if I lower this like this, you be right on. Okay. So by the time you get to P4 over here, you're going to have about a five degree tilt to the right. Okay. Then from there, when you go P4 to P5, you're going to come right around and still five degrees tilt. P5, P5, P6 is about 10 degrees. P7, as this goes like this, it goes to 20 degrees. Okay. But if you're going to, that's fading the ball. But if you're going to hook the golf ball, when you go from P4 P5, your hips, as your hips come like this, like this way, you're going to try to, you're not going to let your hips pull your shoulders open to 45 degrees. Just by straightening right your elbow will open up the shoulders or uncoil the shoulders. And you got to keep your right shoulder back. And your hips, they're going to be a, more of a contrast. If you go to cut the golf ball, your shoulder, hips are going to be about 10 degrees ahead of the shoulders. If you're going to hook it, the shoulders have to be 40 degrees back back behind it. So that, in other words, if I were to hit this ball, uh, if I'm going to hook the ball, I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go top my swing like here, and I'm going to go that way. And my right shoulders me more behind. Here, it would show, I set up like this, it would go. My right shoulders got to stay back more. There's actually a couple of ways you can do this. Your right arm straightens out and your shoulder stays back. Yes, you do not let your hips take it open up so much. Right. Balls yeah. Okay. That's one way of hooking it. Another way of hooking it is you can literally let your upper body literally take over the lower body. Go here like this. And then, you know, you, you just literally. That's more out. the way I used to. When yeah. I want to hook it, I just. That way, it's very tough because everything's a blur. It's just a blur. All you do is just keep your right shoulder back a little longer. See, actually, you'll end up changing uh, the plane line. To get you keeping your shoulders more closed. Now, watch this. Now, I'm going to accelerate my shoulders and hit the ball another, another five or ten yards farther. Okay. Just explaining that if you turn pretty good going back with a setup with the shoulders closed and the ball back low, and you turn pretty good back but not through, and maybe you lower the shoulder and fire the arms, it starts to change everything. Most most guys that are slicing the ball and coming across it too much don't really know it do the good thing and that's keep putting the ball up forward mm -hmm. and that's going to put you more in the forward part of the arc and give you more time to a square the club up and b get it started at least left enough to play a fade half of the day and then the other half of the day it's slicing off the plan right mm -hmm. two fairways yes. over right correct what happens with the ball so forward your shoulders are already open and then they come back more open. so the fix is to put the ball back a little bit understand how the shoulder should work Okay, so this is you going to be turning back. We're just going to say, you know, for the slicers out there, you turn your shoulders, boom, 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 keep turn, 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 90, right? That handle has moved, uh, I don't know what that length is, but close to two and a half feet. Okay, now you start to unwind and you've got to lower the handle for that way. you got to keep coming. There you go. So that's lowered probably a foot. Yeah. And here it's lowered probably a few inches. Okay. By that point there, you'll have the club coming down into the zone here to get into that inside, you know, back half of the arc idea. You know, so A, if it starts here, you're already at a little bit of tilt, like five degrees, which would be good at setup, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, then here's your starting point. Now, now you take it back and line all the way up. 
Now start down, you're going to dip way under my finger. Yeah, and you're going to stop here. It's where your shoulders would stop and your arms would fly. You know what I mean? So let me have your club really quick and you just come stand right over here. You go, let's say, let's say I set the ball here and I turn my shoulders 45 degrees. Now then my hips turn 45 degrees, which moves the shoulders 90 degrees. You know that? Yeah. Right now. Camera. Okay. Right. Stand right in front of me. A little more over here. Right. So that's 90 degrees. When I go up P4 to P5, I'll keep my shoulders here, and I'll just turn my hips back and move the shoulders back to 45 degrees. So this uncoils the shoulders to 45 degrees. Now if I put my shoulder here and I straighten my right elbow out, leave my hips alone, see how they're still 45 degrees closed on this? Right? But, but if I turn my hips back, straighten my right elbow out, and this starts squaring up, I start coming back around, right? which, which is a must. Okay? If you look at torso tilt number two there, from B4 to the top, you're going to have about a five degree tilt because we sit up at a dress. Here, this is perfectly straight. Uh, torso tilt number two. And if I lower this like this, you right on. It. Okay. So by the time you get to P4 over here, you're going to have about a five degree tilt to the right. Okay. Then from there, when you go P4 to P5, you're going to come right around and still five degrees tilt. Five, P5. P5. P6 is about 10 degrees. P7, as this goes like this, it goes to 20 degrees. Okay. But if you're going to, that's fading the ball. As this is happening, yeah, well, straight yeah. you're turning the knee this way just because your hips winding yep, up. You can yep, feel that, right? Yep. And then as you start to come down, you don't want to spin the hips. You want to slide them a little, which helps make room for the shoulder dip, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Yeah. Like that. So I don't want to collapse the knee. Uh, it's okay for the knee to get soft and bend uh, that way. Sure. Yeah, it goes. A little bit. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we're looking to get things to go to yeah, right. Yeah, I think if this is right, then this doesn't matter as much. That's well, what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm going to have it stand right here where I'm watching. Just like this, right? Yeah, right here. Yeah. yeah. So put your uh, put your finger just next to the plate here, right on, on the end of it. Yeah. So that's the starting point for me, right? Okay. And I wind up like this, and I get turned back, and then when I come in, I want to not turn it all the way out, plus I want to tilt it down. By that point there, I will be swinging this club out to right field and finishing, perhaps without a hole, without 90 degrees of shoulder. Back up just one second, put a little phantom swing here, level here, right? So I get over here like this, I've wound up nice, and then I think about, okay, now my shoulder's gonna come down and do about 20 degrees of side bend here. By that time, I'm going to be letting the club swing, and then I don't have to turn. That way, you can start to shift this plane out to the right, rather than if you stand like this, and you keep coming to square the face up. So you look comfortable setting up now. Yeah. Totally. It, it looks normal. Yeah. Where what's not normal is someone that looks like this, you know, with their shoulders open, and that's all because you're trying to play golf with a system that's got some variables in there that are hard to manage day to day yeah. so that's really cool smash one out there for me please I don't know if you've seen the G before oh, yeah. see what I'm saying it's a spot it's a G no words please That thing's out of here. Good job today. Hey everybody, what's happening? It's Gormanator here. I just want to let you know that I'm doing live Zoom lessons. The next best thing to an in-person lesson, a live Zoom. So you want to kick that slice to the curb, hop in, and let's get going. I've got my launch monitor and the tools I need. If you're at the office, work, wherever, we can get it done. Click the link down below, hit the page. It'll tell you all about the lesson and how it works. You'll be excited to get it done because I'll take care of you. See you guys on the next video.